Welcome back, Guitar Lessons with Lewis Lee. I am Lewis Lee. Welcome to the neighborhood. Great. It's our neighborhood. Great. Now, so we're going to get into the finger exercise, which is on page 56. So turn your book to page 56. Again, if you do not have a book, at the end of the lesson, we'll tell you how to obtain a copy of this page and we'll send it to you. We'll give you all that information at the end. Now, we're going to work, be working on exercise five. So what we want to do is set our metronome for 60 beats a minute. Here we go. Okay. And just very quickly, we're dealing with quarter notes. And we're dealing with that F, A, A flat, C, F, A flat, C, F, a flat okay so let's try that here we go going to count one two three four Okay, and that's my clock telling me that I've done five minutes. So let me turn off the metronome. 
and I have the reminder on my clock is on my uh, phone as well. Okay, so just want to make sure I don't go over time so I can address some important issues. So that's what it was. So now after we've done this, you know, we've gone through the finger exercise, that particular exercise, you want to think about what you've done. Each time I practice afterwards, I give myself a chance just to look at the guitar, try to connect, try to look at what you've done so you're getting some sort of a mental picture. Exercising should not just be robotic where you're just going through the motion. No, what I try to do is make an exercise part of my everyday playing. I try to incorporate it because if not, then it's a whole lot of time spent for nothing. So with this exercise, actually what you're doing is you're outlining the A major. A flat. That, that chord. So it's coming off this F minor, which is the relative minor, the Aeolian. So you're coming off that. But you're starting on that F, the sixth degree, and it's a good exercise. Now, why am I explaining this to you? Because remember, it's an exercise, but you want to make sure that whatever you're doing, that you can incorporate that into your playing. Because if not, you're spending a lot of time. So when you're playing, if you're playing a song, and it's in that A major or F minor, you can... Now, it's technique, you see, and reading. But also, exercises are for, <clears throat> they have three purposes, maybe four. Number one, to know, to develop your technique, number one, because it's an exercise. Number two, to learn where the notes are on the instrument. And this particular one is the guitar. So you're learning where the notes are through that exercise. And also for soloing or doing anything that's melodic. If you're soloing, Okay, and that might not sound very musical, but if you if I had chords playing it, then it could fit and I can make it sound more musical. But they're just exercises, or you can jump. See, I'm jumping there. And that's what the technique does. So when you're practicing, always make sure it's not mundane, it's not boring. Try to really connect. I did connect when I was playing. I tried to subconsciously be very uh, aware of what I'm doing, these notes, because the notes really mean a whole lot. You know, Miles would always say, it's not the note that counts, it's the execution. It's how you play that note. So you want to make sure that you play it where it sounds musical, it's entertaining to you, and you love it, and you're having an enjoyable time. And that concludes this part of our exercise. Thank you so much. Guitar Lessons with Lewis Lee is brought to you by the Eubanks Conservatory of Music and Arts, a 501c3 nonprofit corporation whose mission is to help parents teach cultural arts to their children at no cost and to encourage positive growth development, helping to reduce negative aspects of society in the lives of our youth. Welcome back. This is the theory part. This is the theory part. We're going to be working on our sight reading. We're going to start on page 25, okay, and we're covering again the G string, the B string, and the E string. Strings that we've already covered, but there's a combination. Now, on page 25, you see these are etudes in 4-4 four, four on the G string, but there are other notes, okay? So turn your book to page 25, and then we're going to delve into that. Now, under the first staff, you'll see where it says the count. Keep in mind, it's very important to count because that's your gauge, okay? So we're going to start at that, and I'm going to count us off. We're going to jump into it. Ready? One, two, three, four.
four. Now the next song is a song by Carlos Carvajal, and so he was one of my students that helped me write the book. And so a lot of these songs that I had written, uh, I had just written for a student. That's really short. As you see, it's just an etude, one, two, three, four, five. It has five staffs. There's no repeat. So we'll just play that. And remember, we're playing that E string. One, two, three, four. Three. Now, very quickly, you might see something in there that you have not seen before, and that's the third measure. There's a half note with a dot. Now, we all know that a dot increases the value of the note by half. So if it's uh, two counts for that half note, it gets three counts now. Also, you'll see a line that is connecting that note with the following note in the fourth measure. That's called a tie. And just think of if you tie your hands together, that means they're connected. So those two notes are connected. So actually there, it sounds out for five counts. So let's just do that measure very quickly. Just that measure, the third measure. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And that's how that's played, okay? So we've covered quite a bit when it comes down to reading and the notation. Again, what you want to do is if the notes are not very well memorized and you do not understand what a dot does for a note, then what you want to do is go back and review your, um, your notes on page, I think it's page 11, 10 and 11, the note values. A, a dot increases the value of the note by half. So if it's a half note, then it'll increase it not two counts, it would be three counts. If it's a quarter note, it would be half of a quarter note, so half of a quarter note and an eighth. So it gets a count and a half. One beat, but it gets a count and a half. That's how long you would sustain that note. So just review all this. It's very important to know this when you're reading. It's almost like knowing your alphabets and your syllables and your consonants and your vowels. You want to study it very well so that when you come across a word, you can pronounce it instantaneously without thinking. It has to be something that's done habitually. You have to study. It has to be a habit, habitual. Study to show yourself approved. Okay? And that's biblical. And we'll end on that. Thank you so much. Guitar Lessons with Lewis Lee is brought to you by the Eubanks Conservatory of Music and Arts, a 501c3 nonprofit corporation whose mission is to help parents teach cultural arts to their children at no cost and to encourage positive growth development, helping to reduce negative aspects of society in the lives of our youth. Welcome back to my neighborhood. This is the fun part. This is a good neighborhood, okay? It's all about love and God and worshiping them and kingdom building. That's what we want. Music is how we praise God. Okay, he loves music. So that's what you'll be doing. Okay, now we're going to finish up on the song Little St. Nick, which is Christmas. We all know that's a special time, a special day. So this is a special song, okay? So this will be the last time we review these chords. We haven't finished all of them, and it's important that we do that. So we left off with that diminished chord. 
Remember I was telling you that diminished. That's a really nice chord. It creates movement, okay? It creates a excitement. Okay, so study that. Remember when you're practicing, try to get into the essence of what you're doing, the aesthetics. What does it do? Study it, listen to it. Okay, great. So that's that chord. The next chord is that G7 chord, remember? Now remember we did the G chord, then we did the G major. Remember that G major? We did that G major chord. Pretty. Then we did the G6. Now this is the G7. Remember I told you the difference in these chords is you have major, um, straight G, excuse me, you have a straight G chord, then you have a G major, which is that major seventh, that seventh degree, that F sharp, and you have that G seventh, the one we're covering now, and you have the G sixth. So study these chords, you know, just play with it, take some time, do not rush it, get to hear it. Also, I just wanted to mention that you notice I'm playing, this is a Martin that I have, which I'm really blessed to God. This is the Woody Guthrie. And my producer let me use this this time because I have all these other guitars that I've used. And I just wanted to let you know that the acoustic is a great guitar to practice with because it's not real loud. You will not disturb anyone. And you know, the, it, it's just great for the tonality. So if you have an acoustic and you're playing with me, don't worry. If we have electric, that's fine too, okay? I just wanted to let you know that this time I'm using my acoustic. Okay, moving on, then the next chord is that C chord. That's pretty basic. We've covered that. That's a pretty chord too. Then that D. And that chord can move up. trying to have fun. I'm not trying, but I'm having fun. Let me put it that way. And I'm trying to demonstrate, or I'm demonstrating how this is what you want. You want to be able to connect. I'm hearing something now. That sounds good, and it's entertaining. You see, if you can entertain yourself and if it sounds good, you love it, then you can entertain others. If it doesn't sound good and feel good to you, it's not going to sound good and feel good to others. So keep that in mind. Now the next chord is that F chord. Now this is a bar chord. A bar chord means that you're using your first finger as the nut. We all know the, the, the nomenclature. We know the nomenclature right here is this right here is the nut. So now you're, this is acting like the nut, okay? The E chord would be this. And this is that F chord. Okay, so that's that F chord. So practice that, okay? Practice using your bar chord too. Because you don't have to use a capo for this. And if you want to play G, you can play G. Play A, C, B, G, A. Okay, so play around with it. Now, another chord, B flat with that slash with the F. Remember that B flat means that you want to B flat right here with an F in the bass. That F is here. That's a pretty chord. And 
bass and B flat with the F in the bass. Not this. Hear the difference? This has a B in the bass now. The F is there, but the bass, the B flat, is more of a dominant note. You have that? Now we have that A. And there's no, the A is in the bass. A. B flat in the bass. Okay. Then we have an F chord again, as the previous one we played, but now the C is in the bass. That's your C note. Remember, you want to know where these notes are. And I hear this a lot because I read a lot in any position. And most guitar players want to know because this is a strange instrument. It's tuned in fourths. The first four strings are tuned in fourth. Then from the fourth to the fifth is a third. What do I mean by that? That's the distance to interval. So this is E, A. So E, F, G, A. One, two, three, four. Those are called fourths, intervals. Then you have A to D, A, B, C, D, and so on and so forth. But when it gets to the G, it goes to a B. G, A, B. So that's the third, then it goes back to a fourth. Why is it that way? I have no idea. I try to find out in college. It's just how it was done, just like it's alphabets, why they call it A and A and a B and a B. You know, it goes way back. And so that's not as important as you know in the theoretical way of how the guitar is tuned with the interval. So you have that. Okay, so uh, with that in mind, this right here is the F chord with a C in the bass. So the fifth is in the bass, F, A, C, E. So you have that F. One, two, three, four, five. F, G, A, B, C. Okay, just playing around some chords. So you have all these chords, study these chords because you want these chords to become part of your vocabulary, what you have in your arsenal of other chords. Off the top of my head, I must know about, and I'm not exaggerating, five or 600 different chords. And then it gets to the point where you can make up chords. You can just make them up as you go along. Sometimes I do that. My mother used to always say, because I'm a early dyke, and I'm a rhetorician. So I know a lot of words I studied uh, English language, I study etymology in college, and sometimes I say words, my mother would say, you're making that word up, and I might have made it up. But anyway, I got off on a tangent, let me get back to the crux, I, I seem to um, gear it off. And so, very quickly, that concludes our lesson. Bye and have fun. If you would like to purchase a copy of the Eubanks Guitar Pedagogy Course Instruction Book used by Lewis Lee in this video, just contact us at lewis-lee at the-ecma.com or mail a request to Post Office Box 1175, Hawthorne, California, 90251, or call 424-350-7027. And remember, all donations are fully tax-deductible.